Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our traffic council meeting for November 16th. We'll begin with introductions. My name is David Kozas. I'm the transportation coordinator from um, the Public Works Department Transportation Division. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, as far as the other traffic council members, I see we have Captain Doucette from the Traffic Bureau, Isaac Prezant, our traffic engineer from DPW, our citizen representative, Mitch Fishman, is here. Also, our alternate citizen rep, Jeremy Freudberg, is with us. Um, Councillor Downs is our fifth um, member of Traffic Council. I expect her to join the meeting a little bit later today. We also have Danielle Delaney from the clerk's office. I also expect Adrian Ayala. He's a traffic engineer in our DPW. I don't see any other elected officials at the beginning of the meeting. So we will begin with our first item. So our first item of the evening is TC 5723, Jesse Corey, 64 Oak Cliff Road, requesting a trial that would restrict access to Center Street southerly from Walnut Street to all vehicles except bicycles. So I have a very brief presentation, actually just one slide for this item, and then we can open it up for any public comment and then hopefully have a vote. So let me just move something on my screen, okay. So this is a view of Center Street. We have Walnut Street in the foreground, Center Street and the Route 9 ramps. The trial, as I understand it, is to close Center Street from Walnut Street to the Route 9 ramps to all vehicles except bicycles. It would look like this is my understanding. That was the item that was docketed. And uh, my recommendation is to deny the item. It would be extremely impactful. Uh, we can open it up for public comment at this point. I see Jesse. So my name is Jesse Corey, 64 Oak Cliff Road. I am the docketer of this request. And I actually only docketed this only four weeks ago. And so I'm so happy that you're taking this up right now. And the reason why I docketed this item is because I drive through this intersection multiple times a week because I got a job at the TJ Maxx on Needham Street. And the the new traffic lights that were just put up at the intersection of Center Street and Route 9 huh? has caused traffic yeah, to block this intersection. Of Center Street and Walnut Street. Can everybody the, the queues mute? are, are too me. long? Excuse me, Jesse. Okay. Can everyone on the line please mute so we could hear what Jesse has to say? Thank you. The, the, the queues for the queues are too long, which is why I request that it be do not enter except for bicycles, and that the detour either be turn left on Walnut, then right on Route Nine or right on Walnut, left on Floral, left on Route 9. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. Are there any other comments from the public before we take a motion? David, you just you want to mention just some emails and things of that nature that we received? We received five emails opposed and many phone calls um, that were confused and were not supportive. Thanks. I see we're joined by Councilor Downs from Ward 5. Any other public comments on this item? Anyone like to make a motion? I would move to deny. Okay, we have a motion to deny the a uh, request for a trial to close Center Street to all vehicles um, except bicycles along this stretch. Any last comments before Danielle calls the roll? Okay, Danielle, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kosas? Aye. Aye for Mr. denial. F Mr. Fishman? 
Uh, aye for denial. Captain Doucette. Aye for denial. Mr. Prezant. Aye. Councilor Downs. Aye. Okay, that item is denied five to zero. Okay, thank you. We're gonna move on to our next item. It's TC 5523, Adrian Ayala, City Transportation Engineer, requesting to remove one metered parking stall at 195 Sumner Street to improve sight lines. And I see that Adrian has joined us. I'll just run through the presentation and Adrian, you could chime in if I missed anything, okay? Um, so here's a map of Sumner Street. This is the exact location shown in the red uh, rectangle that we'll be discussing right near the Castleman Castleman House. Yeah, the Castleman House um, driveway. Here's a view. So you can see the cursor, hopefully. We have a metered parking space very, very close, like one or two feet away from a pretty well-used driveway. So when there's a car parked here, it really does block sight lines to get out of this driveway. And there was a request to remove that metered parking space. Really, the metered parking spaces, any parking space, should be beyond five feet of a driveway in the city anyway. So our recommendation is to approve the docketed item to remove that um, metered parking space. We have the technical language in front of us that we would need to vote on to adjust our traffic and parking regulations. Um, and so that is shown on the screen on slides 11 and 12. Um, so that is the item. Um, we can take public comment. Anyone have any comments before a motion is made? And maybe Isaac can also help me just see if anyone has their hand raised. I don't see any. Okay. So I would like to make a motion to approve this item to remove that metered parking space by approving this language. We have the draft language in front of us. It would be um, TPR 913. Is that right, Danielle? Yes, that's correct. Okay, good. So I'll make a motion to approve the language of TPR 913 for TC 5523 to remove the metered space. Are there any additional comments? Okay, I don't see any. So Danielle, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kosas. Aye. Mr. Fishman. Aye. Captain Doucette. Aye. Mr. Prezant. Aye. Councilor Downs. Aye. Okay, that item's approved five to zero TPR 913. Okay, thank you. And just for my records, did we have a five to zero vote on the previous item or a four to zero vote? Five to zero. Five, five to zero, yeah. okay. Five yeah. to zero, yes. Good. Okay, so our next item is TC 5623. It's Adrian Ayala, City Transportation Engineer, requesting to add 15 newly installed rectangular rapid flashing beacons, or RFBs, to the TPR, or our traffic and parking regulations. The locations are listed below. They're, so all of these are already um, installed and functioning, I believe, and we're just voting now to add all of these locations into our traffic and parking regulations, uh, along with all the other signals that are already listed. Um, 1320 Center Street, Adams Street at Middle Street, Beacon Street at Cold Spring Park, Cold Springs Park, uh, Beacon Street at Newberry Street, Center Street at Allerton Road, Center Street at Newtonville Avenue, Chestnut Street at Amherst Road, Commonwealth Avenue at Irving Street, Commonwealth Avenue at Manet Road, um, Cypress Street at Brayland Avenue, Lexington Street at Auburn Street, Parker Street at Browning Road. Uh, uh -oh, I don't have, oh, okay, here's the back. Fremont Street at Hibbard Road, Walnut Street at Dunkley Road, and Waverly Avenue at Lorna Road. So this is just an image of a um, rectangular rapid flashing beacon that we have already installed in Newton. This is on Homer Street by the library and city hall. These are the same type of beacons that are in all of these other 15 locations that we would be approving um, 
by voting on this language. So I will make a motion to approve the language of TPR 914 to add all of these 15 locations into our TPR. Are there any comments? Yeah, I have yes. one, if, if I may. Um, the uh, I cannot tell you how excited my neighbors uh, near the Chestnut Street at Amherst Road um, our RFB are that it finally went in and how eagerly they're awaiting the electrification of, of the east one. <laughs> the west one works great. Um, these are really, really helpful for um, pedestrian visibility and for an enhanced sense of safety going across the street. Still hard. We still need to worry about lighting and distracted drivers, but um, such a quality of life improvement. Thank you. And I, I mean, I would, I would add that just, just half an hour ago when I was driving from my house in Newton Corner over to my office on Craft Street, I happened to drive up Adam Street. I saw it was pretty dark. It seems pretty dark tonight. I saw that beacon, the RFB at Adam Street and Middle Street illuminated. I saw someone in completely black clothes, you know, crossing right there. I don't know if I would have seen them if they didn't have the RFB there. So I thought, oh gosh, I'm just about to go and vote <laughs> to put this signal uh, into our regulation. So um, yeah, I think it was very, very effective. Um, so I will make the motion to approve the language of TPR 914. Um, are there any other comments? Okay, Danielle, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kosas. Uh, Mr. Yes. yes, aye. Mr. Fishman. Aye. Captain Doucette. Aye. Mr. Prezant. Aye. Councilor Downs. Aye. Okay, that's approved 5 to 0, TPR 914. Thank you. Okay, so our next item is TC5823. This is Adrian Ayala, city transportation engineer, requesting to add an RRFB to the intersection of Crafts Street at Albemarle Road. Okay, so this is the location right here. Two months ago, we had a vote at Traffic Council to add a stop sign on Watertown Street at Eddie and Elliott. There was an RRFB that was in place there. So part of that vote was to take out the RRFB at that location. There was interest in moving it somewhere nearby um, and we, this was an excellent location that we had been thinking about adding an RFP um, temporarily until a new traffic signal goes in. So that is our recommendation to add the RFP right here into this location at this crosswalk across Craft Street at Albemarle. And our recommendation is to approve that uh, item to move the, to install the RFB and add it into our traffic and parking regulations. And I see Kathy Lawford, you have your hands raised. We just need to know your uh, your your name and your address. I just, I, I wanna say, uh, this is so important for those of us who try to cross there <laughs> and um, the flex posts that were up are now down and there's been another accident. So please, please, put this in, thank you. Thank you. And did you say your name, your address, please? Sorry, 26 Mossman Street, West Newton. Thank you. I see uh, Leonard DePaolo, you have your hand raised? Yes, um, right if you go backwards down the triangle uh, to North Street, they should add one on that side because everybody tries to access the trail on the Charles River and it's virtually impossible to cross on North Street also. So I don't know how that works. Like if you can add, like if, you, if I had to prepare that ahead of time, but I'm just looking at all this, the other 15 um lights that you're putting up and then this one and i'm thinking why don't they have one on the other side right and i could say that there is a plan to add a, a rfb uh mm -hmm. right at exactly that location that you have uh talked about at 
Albemarle at North Street. That's part of a Safe Routes to School project that's being funded by MassDOT. And we will be actually talking about that in one of the upcoming items. So okay. thank you. And did thank you say you. your address, by the way? I'm sorry? Did you note your address for the record? Oh, 6 Emmons Street. Emmons Street and Newton. Okay, yeah, thank Newton, you. West Newton, yeah. Okay, I see CJ. I, can I can't really read it. Is it bot? Uh, my apologies. I think my question is answered. I had the same question as Leonard and David. Thank you for answering. It was for the same one to add an RFP for mm -hmm. at Albemarle and North. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comments on this? Okay, so thank you all. I did do, I did an observation of that um, corner in the morning before the flex posts went up with um, Councillor Bowman and Jen Martin of Safe Routes to School, not Councillor Bowman, Councillor Leary and Jen Martin of uh, Safe Routes to School. And that was a heavily used crosswalk for kids getting today. Um, and we saw a number of times where drivers, mostly eastbound, just whipped through that intersection without stopping for the kids in the crosswalk. It was it was really hair raisingly frightening. So I I think this is an excellent location. Good, thank you. Uh, I see L. Wolin. Are you Len? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Kosas, how are you, Len I'm Wolin? Well. Four nine Cratchit. I'm so supportive of this. It's fine. It's right in front of my house. The question, I think it's not in the same spot as it's showing in the picture. I think that crosswalk is now pushed a little bit further down to where the um, the bus stop sign is. Is that correct? Um, I believe you're right. I have I do right. have Adrian Ayala on the you know on the Zoom call and Isaac. Do either of you can either of you confirm yeah. that? I think that's the old place where it was. Yeah, you're right. I'm looking at the aerial from uh, on Google Maps, and you're right, it is down a little bit further. Um, it is how that is exactly, however, where I saw the kids crossing in the morning and, and nearly getting hit by uh, drivers who wanted to uh, access. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that the plan is to install it more, more in front of your home, Mr. Wallen. Um, that's the more popularly used yeah. crossing, and also the one that has better um, solar um, sunshine availability to power the device. Yeah, I just didn't think that cross that you're showing in the picture exists anymore. I thought that was- that's Yeah, we, it, uh, it exists, um, but we're just, it's just sort of a snapshot to show the whole intersection. Okay. Okay, Thanks. so there is a cross- uh, I think it's, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's good, thank mm -hmm. you. Is the new crosswalk even further to the east than this bus stop? You, you can see it in the photo, David. It's just it's just towards the back of the photo. Oh yeah, uh, actually that's right. Uh, we're looking in the opposite direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, that's my mistake. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I can I can share for folks that right now the plan with our signal contractor is to install it the week after Thanksgiving. That's that's when we're all free to get the job done next. So. Pretty pretty soon. Excellent. Right. So, can I? Am I still allowed to talk or no? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was actually probably just as confused. Yeah, it is. It's further down. Yeah, because this is your house, I think. Yeah, that's so my house. I was, I was thinking this was yeah. the bus stop in front of my house, right? So it's the actual the other one. Yeah, it's this one. It's because I should have said that we're looking southeast toward yeah. North. Street. So yes. So this is the crosswalk back back down here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Thank you all for clarifying that. Um, any other comments? All right, so I'll make a motion to approve the language of TPR 915 to add this um, RFB at Craft Street at Albemarle Road, Eastern Leg. Any last comments? Danielle, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kosas. Aye. Mr. Fishman. Aye. Ms. Captain Doucette. Aye. Mr. Prezant. Aye. And Councilor Downs. Aye. Okay, that's approved five to zero TPR 915. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I guess in in terms of scheduling, um, we have to wait for our appeals deadline, which is um, 21 days. I don't know if Isaac or Adrian, if either of you know anything about when the timeline might be to install this after. Is I'm not sure if we're into 
December if we need to wait for the spring or not. Do you have any idea about that? Um, I mean, I think we're really just making a decision to vote it into the TPR. Um, I'm kind of like some of the previous items where the RFB is already installed. I, I don't think we're going to delay the install. It'll, it'll be the week after Thanksgiving right now See, is the okay. plan. Yeah, that sounds, oh, that's even better. We don't even need to wait until December 6th. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, do you have a comment? No, I was going to say the same thing that we just approved a, a dozen RFBs supposedly without permission. So this is kind of the same thing. Retroactively, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we sort of act like the rubber stamp and things like yep. that, have, that have funding, you know, that cost something. Uh, they're sort of approved in a different, you know, committee or different process. And then um, the final approval is here at Traffic Council. Okay, let's move on to the next item. So we have TC 5822, uh, Jason Sobel, Director of Transportation Operations, requesting to permanently close the northbound block of Albemarle Road for vehicular traffic in both directions between Craft Street and North Street, except for bicycles. This portion of Albemarle Road has been closed since September 2020 as part of an ongoing traffic council trial. Uh, we've discussed this item more than once in the past. Most recently, it was in December of 2022, almost a year ago, where it was held and the trial continued. So this is the, the block that we're talking about, the block of Albemarle, Albemarle northbound between Craft Street and North Street. Here's a view of what it's looked like for quite a while now. The road is closed at Craft Street, and it's not accessible from North Street because it's one way northbound. Uh, it's not blocked off. We still do have city vehicles that need to go down and sweep the street and um, remove snow. So it's not blocked off at that end, but it, you can't drive down that way except for city vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. The rationale for permanently closing it, um, first of all, there's no curb cuts or driveways along this block. Um, it's main, I mean, the main reason that it was originally approved was a safety improvement. It reduces vehicular conflicts at that intersection. Um, it creates a T intersection right there. Um, it's very heavily used by bicyclists, by uh, pedestrians crossing to get to the Albemarle Field, to the middle school. Um, it also reduces the conflicts at Albemarle and North, right? Um, so yeah. this vote would not change anything in the field right now. We would not be installing a new physical barrier at North Street. We would just leave everything exactly how it is. We're just making changes um, to make it official in our traffic and parking regulations. We will continue the street sweeping, continue the snow removal. It does you know, once we vote that this is permanently closed and officially closed, I do think it creates an opportunity for additional improvements down the road. Once we have an idea and a design and funding, um, I think that it could be great, you know, in the future to have a very nice pedestrian and bicycle environment, especially with safer crossings on both ends. Um, we're almost like an extension of the park across the street yeah. to some new green space. So that is our recommendation to approve the docketed item. This is the technical language that we would be voting on so that it's still available for bicyclists. Um, and that is the, that's what I got for this item. Um, Clarifying oh, question. Yes. Yes. Um, would it, um, prohibit other non-motorized vehicles. I'm thinking, uh, you know, people, kids uh, commute down to school on skateboards or scooters, uh, you know, the stand on scooters, little things like that. Would those also be prohibited? Only, the, only you know, only motorized vehicles would be excluded. Yeah, except it says except bicycles. I'm wondering if we need to make sure our language is clear enough that uh, we don't in some future administration have um, <laughs> A scooter crackdown or a skateboard crackdown. I'm sorry, you're not supposed to use wheeled vehicles except bicycles. Mm. It may well, be something to run by. I mean, maybe this is the language we've been using all along for the carriageway, for instance. The you know the, the two way travel on the carriageway. 
it's something that we could run by the law department if we need to change it. I think we we All could. Right. Um, okay, so we're joined by Councillor Kelly and Ward from Ward Three. You have your hand up. Um, would you like to make a comment? Um, actually, I just have a question. Um, I th I think I heard you right, but when you say um, only for non-motorized vehicles, aside from the people who live along that strip, correct? Like, how do they get in and out? Because uh, I, I was driving eastbound on Craft Street this afternoon uh, from where I live down at like Waltham Street, and there was a car coming northbound out of this intersection and crossed over. And it didn't feel like that was right to me at all. But is that something that is possible? That should not be possible. But it, because... it happened at at 2.15 this afternoon. <laughs> right. So I believe it could be a moving violation for, you know, driving in through a do not enter sign, right? If you this live sign? there, you're going to try and get out however you can. So I guess my question you know, there's is- no, There's no driveway there. Oh, so somebody, I didn't really see where they came from. So that was not right. That yeah. was someone who, I, I don't know what the story is, but it doesn't lead anywhere. Well, what the person did was cross over crafts and head down the other, the southbound side of Albemarle, took like a little juncture there in the middle and headed the other direction. It, it just felt very weird to me to see a car coming that way, but it, it did happen this afternoon. So how would things like that be prevented from happening? Are you going to leave those plastic barricades up in the meantime until you come up with a, a final plan or what? Like so he he just came through that little opening right there that we're looking at. You're saying that there's a car that drove through this little opening? Yes. Yes, I am saying that. <laughs> yes, a little fast white car. Okay, well, that, that person could have received a moving violation if they were caught. Yeah, okay. So not okay, but there's not a way to think about preventing that. I mean, I suppose someone can move the bar barrier over a little bit more. Okay. If there's room for a small car to get through. Just a comment. I don't have an objection to this. I just wanted to share that observation that happened to occur this afternoon, but okay. thanks. Bye yeah. for now. <laughs> I see someone named LJL. Yes, good evening. Um, first of all, pardon my laryngitis. Um, this is Elizabeth Hoberman at 53 Allen Ave in Wabin. Um, and this is actually my first time to the traffic council meeting. Um, to go back for a second, regarding the last question, I think the barriers are different now. I drive by this way almost every day. Um, I think they're more like white and black boxes in this particular um, view from 1215. So I wonder if they can be moved. Um, but getting back to my question, in general, given this um, Albemarle Road, both southbound and northbound between Crafts um, Street and North Street, is this item and the following two docket items, I'm wondering if a study has ever been done of putting stop signs um, at the crossings instead of keeping the southbound um or northbound permanently closed. So you can see in this image, there's stop signs um, at the end of the road where cars used to be able to go through and take a left before this barrier was in. And I'm just wondering, um, yes, has, has anyone ever done a study of putting say stop signs here and also um, looking south? Yeah, I can I can take that, David. Okay, so and just to clarify, are you, you're saying to put stop signs where on Craft Street? Well, you see how in this photo, um, the stop signs are on, on North Street? Yes. But the barriers, so the barriers didn't used to be there. Used to be able to drive um, northbound. North, this is had, northbound only. Yes, northbound, exactly. So, so no one would ever be driving southbound. Items, yeah, so the next two docket items, they'll have to do with the, um, south the southbound on the other side. Is, and yeah. I'm not trying to jump the gun. I'm just trying to figure out, has anybody done studies of... I assume, as you just mentioned previously, that the traffic and the um, pedestrian and biker safety was paramount issue in putting up these barriers. But have any studies been done about putting up stop signs to better facilitate the flow of traffic since, um, you know, post pandemic, I read that these have been up since like September or something, but 
post the height of the pandemic with all the cars back on the street, things get really backed up. Yeah, I, I think the best resource for the public um, mm -hmm. is there's a road safety audit that was completed. So the uh, Mass okay. Dodge Safe Routes to School grant that David mentioned earlier, and it, um, mm -hmm. no worries if you join late, um, that that's a really good project underway. We, we, we understand it'll take some time, but the road safety audit that was done, I believe, a year and a half ago now, had a lot of um, information and evaluation, um, and it's this this area is currently under design by the consultant assi assigned to MassDOT. Um, so there were a lot of considerations there and there's a lot of information about various crashes and um, really what's yeah. going on. And and even even as far as like what were good short term measures, some of which we've done, you know, what were more midterm, what were more long term. So it's it's a pretty good study that I would point you towards uh, at your leisure. Thank you. Yes, and I can testify driving by this area all the time that this has really improved safety. Um, but like I said, leading into the next two docket items, I was curious. So um, thanks for yeah. that information. Thank you. Yeah, I if you if you search this intersection and just add like Mastaw Safe Routes to School in Google, I'm I'm pretty sure one of the first links will be that project and the publicly posted um, road safety audit. But if not, you're welcome to reach out to Newton DPW and we can point you in that direction. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Wolin. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Kosas, uh, concerning this, uh, a couple things. One, the person who commented two times ago, I, I live right here. I have never seen anyone drive through the barriers. So if today was, that might have been the first time. So I, I think those barriers are doing do a pretty good job in terms of not having people go back and forth. For the year that I lived here, I've never seen anyone drive through it. So um, having those there, I think, works well as one. Number two, I just wanted to just to clarify, I know you mentioned in the slide that uh, what we're voting on today, in essence, would keep both sides of the street exactly the same as they are, right? With these planters on this side and just having the do not enter signs on the other way. So that, because, you know, one of my concerns is is really, is with the snow plowing and removal and, and there's junk in the road at times. I just, I didn't know if, formally something has to go in what we're approving today to say that it won't be blocked off until another solution comes or that's just assumed i just i didn't know if what's on this slide becomes public record and 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 it won't be that all of a sudden three weeks from that uh five weeks from now someone just puts something on the other side and then nothing can come down the road so i didn't know if something formally had to put in the recommended language or if there is in there i just haven't had time to read the whole thing um, we're voting on this specific language on on this slide. Um, there's nothing that needs to be specifically stated that says that we will not put in some sort of blockade uh, at the do not enter. I, we don't do that. We wouldn't do that. We we know that the street needs to be swept and uh, okay. still used by pedestrians and bicyclists, and so it needs to be accessible. So, so it'll 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 remain exact sort of the way that it is today. Yeah, for now, right? Okay, all right, good. Well, I I'll just and I'll say just in terms of uh, you know closing the road for the safety that um, you know I previously was not supportive because I was trying to get my driveway in there, but now I am supportive of it. That is great to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, Jeremy. Yeah, no, I just wanted to follow up since Mr. Wollin is here. I know that a year ago we deferred voting on this because we were trying to see what was going to happen with your driveway project and your garage project. Yeah. I know it went to the ZBA. I don't know where, where that stands. You can uh, just let us know. I got turned down. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm sorry about that. Thank but... you. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Council Downs. I mean, I don't think we were explicit enough about whose safety was was really impacted by this closure. And it really was that we were seeing crashes and near misses right there at, at North Street and Crafts as people continually tried to make that left turn. And uh, in order to bypass the signal, uh, you know, very clever move, except it, it resulted in lots and lots and lots of crashes. It also really mucked up the North Street, Craft Street intersection because of the delays that it would impose on North Street going northbound. 
Um, and that was part of what um, the city studied, that we actually improved traffic operations and improved safety at that northern intersection as part of this. Um, as for what might happen eventually with this, with, this, um, with this section, I know we're looking at ways to absorb more stormwater and prevent more flooding, particularly as we get more intense rainstorms with climate change. Um, Cheesecake Brook is one of our number one flood locations and number one areas that we want to, as a city, look to try to uh, address some of that. So one of the possible um, results of this vote, um, I'm not saying it's happening and it wouldn't happen without extensive public process and planning, but one of the possible uses for part of the paved section of this section of Evermall Road might be some green infrastructure or some um, un- um, channeling of Cheesecake Brook so that water is slowed down and uh, flooding downstream of this and upstream of this is less severe in the future. Thank you, Councillor Downs. And I'm glad you mentioned the crashes that, you know, had happened in the past for vehicles traveling northbound on Albemarle and turning onto North Street, because it's actually something that we'll get into when we talk about one of the trials on this side. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I do see that we're count we're joined by Councillor Wright from Ward Three. Um, I see Seth Goodman. You have your hand raised. Ah, uh, yeah. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Seth Goodman, forty three Pratt Drive, West Newton, just just nearby. Um, I'm glad to see that this is made made permanent. I think it's before that barrier was put up. It just looked like uh, nothing good was going to happen here. Uh, I'll also point out that there used to be a no left turn onto that section from Crafts going east, and people constantly took a left there. They're not supposed to. They're supposed to go to the light, take a left on the north. They would often take a left at that uh, intersection into oncoming traffic. So um, this barrier prevents that from happening. So I think this is a great idea. Yeah, I do remember years ago, this little section of Craft Street between Albemarle. I think it allowed left turns in left to Albemarle southbound and left to Albemarle northbound until that was changed at one point to only allow the lefts southbound. Yeah, um, they, yeah. They would routinely ignore the, the no, <laughs> no left turn. There. Right, the, right. Ignoring signs is another slide that we'll see in the next item, which we'll be getting to shortly. Um, any other comments on this item? Okay, good. So I am going to make a motion then to approve the language of TPR 916 to make the closure permanent by approving the language shown on this slide, this technical language. Any last comments? Okay, good. Danielle, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kosas. Aye. Mr. Fishman. Aye. Captain Doucette. Aye. Mr. Prezant. Aye. Councilor Downs. Aye. Okay, that's approved 5 to 0 TPR 916. Very good. Thank you all for this process. I think it was a good one. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next two items, which are two separate trials. We're going to, I'm going to open both of them together and run through both presentations before public comment. So the first item is TC 1723. This is Matthew Mazur, 24 Maynard Street, requesting consideration of a trial to close Albemarle Road southbound at North Street between North Street um, and Maynard Street. And then I'm also going to open the next item, which is TC 2623, Jesse Corey, 64 Oak Cliff Road, on behalf of neighborhood residents, mm -hmm. requesting the following changes for the block of Albemarle Road between North Street and Craft Street, the Western Leg. Convert to a two-way traffic circulation pattern, add a do not enter restriction at the intersection of Albemarle Road at Craft Street, add a right turn only restriction from Albemarle Road southbound onto Craft Street, and add a stop sign at the intersection of Albemarle Road at North Street. Okay, so I'm gonna run through 
both of these presentations, and then we'll open it up for, for discussion. Okay, so the first request for a trial is this first block of Albemarle Road between North Street, really, and, and Maynard Street. The request is to close this access. So you cannot turn right from North Street onto Albemarle Road, okay? So we have a couple slides that show um, what would happen to traffic um, and access. Currently, with the road open, anyone traveling from North Street to Craft Street could take the right onto Albemarle and then take the right onto Craft Street, okay? With the trial, without the access onto Albemarle, vehicles would continue down North Street to the signal at Craft Street and then take the sharp right turn onto Craft Street, right? So this, we have a couple images of a, these are 50 foot truck turn simulations. So this shows the space that a truck would need to make the tur various turns. This is a truck, a 50 foot truck turning from North Street onto Albemarle Road. So you could see the truck is able to fit within, this is the area that it would take up for the turn, for the movement. It can fit within the intersection to make that turn onto Albemarle. Just to add. Then, yeah. Yes, go ahead, Isaac. I just want to explain why we picked that vehicle. That vehicle is the design vehicle for arterial roadways per the Newton Street Design Guide and other national guidances. So that, that's why we're showing that one. Thank you, Isaac. I didn't even know that. So thanks for that. So this is classified as an arterial North Street? Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're going to just continue through the presentations first, and then we'll take the public comment. Um, okay. So then the truck after the turn onto Albemarle, if this vehicle wants to turn onto Craft Street, here's what it would look like. Here's the space it would take. Um, it could fit within the space allowed and can make that turn. Okay, with the closure of Albemarle, this is what our truck turn simulation would look like. The truck would come down past Albemarle, stop at this light at North Street, and then this is a very difficult turn for trucks. You can see the amount of space that that truck would take. Um, it would, you know, it would take all this, this entire left turn pocket. Um, you know, the truck would not be able to make that turn if there's any vehicles waiting in this left turn pocket. These vehicles would need to probably back up or the truck would have to, I'm not sure what would happen. When there, if there's a truck turning, when there's any vehicles in this left turn pocket or even any vehicles in the travel lane. So yeah, this is a, yeah, go ahead, Isaac. I, I can note exactly what would happen is they would hit our traffic signals, which they do about three times a year. Yep, that's the next slide. <laughs> that's this. So we are concerned about this traffic signal. I don't know if this is exactly where it is, but somewhere in this vicinity. Um, it is already knocked down regularly. We are definitely concerned that if if there's any cars here, then the truck would probably be more on this side and would be very likely to hit our signal even more regularly. So this is a big concern of ours for this movement right here. Um, it would be expensive to keep on replacing that signal all the time. And it's also a safety issue, of course. So the next thing we looked at was how do the residents who live in this neighborhood, like on Mossman Street, for instance, how do they get to their homes from North Street? So anyone coming down North Street from Waltham right now, they just take this turn on the Albemarle. If it's not between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., they could take the right turn onto Maynard and then to Mossman. So it's pretty direct. But with this closure, these residents would have a roundabout journey they would have to continue down North Street, more traffic coming into this signal, which is over capacity, I believe. Make the right turn, the sharp turn, come all the way up this way, um, turn onto Morrill Street. Is that the name of the street? I think so, Morrill Street. And then yeah. 
make the right turn onto Maynard Street and then the left turn onto Mossman. So it's pretty roundabout every time they are coming to their house. Um, so that is a concern for these residents. And even more so for the residents who live right on Craft Street in these houses, right now, they just, when they're coming to their home, they come down North Street, take the right and go to their driveway. But if this is closed, it's, it's very roundabout. They'd have to come down to North Street, wait at the signal, take the right, come up here, go in Moral, then take the right onto Maynard all the way down and then take another right just to get to their driveways. So um, that is very inconvenient for these residents. Um, then just thinking about how do vehicles come who are trying to get down to Watertown Street, what would it be like for them? So right now they take the right onto Albemarle. This is the intersection that we're all concerned about at Craft Street, but vehicles right now could wait their turn and then continue down Albemarle and then take the right onto Watertown Street. But in the future, if it's closed, they would have to go through the signal at North Street and Crafts, take the sharp turn, go into the left turn pocket, turn left onto Albemarle and continue their journey. So sort of zooming into this intersection, currently this is showing vehicles just coming southbound on Albemarle, waiting for a break in the traffic, continuing across to Albemarle. That's what they do now. In the future, like we said, they would go, have to go down to the light at North Street, take the right, and then get into this left turn lane um, and take the left. So there's, it's not very long. It's just limited space right here. This is this section right here, I think. Mm. Uh, no, it's just this little tiny section right here, right, to make that left-hand turn. So I think that's the last slide that we have for this uh, request, for this trial. I'm gonna go ahead and do the presentation for the next trial that we had already opened. Um, and um, then after this, we'll go into public comment. So this trial has various components. Um, this is for this whole section of Albemarle between North Street and Craft Street. First, so it does not close access from North Street. We still have the southbound access, but a right turn only when you get to Craft Street. You cannot turn left from Albemarle onto Craft Street. Right? You cannot come down and take the left, and you can't come down and go straight through. It's a right turn only. That's part of the um, docketed item, but it's, actually asking for two-way traffic, but a do not enter um, from Craft Street. So the residents who live here would be able to come out of their driveways and go up nor you know, northbound or southbound. Vehicles should not be entering. At least there would be a sign that would be do not enter. And then there would be a stop sign at North Street. So these are the components of the trial that was docketed uh, by Mr. Corey. So we have a series of photos um, that sort of take you through different locations um, along, I guess we're starting from the south, working our way up to the north and then turning around and going southbound. So this is the first image. This is looking north from Craft Street. Right, so right now you can't enter, it's do not enter. The trial would keep the do not enter signs, right? So you still can't enter from Craft Street, but this driveway, you know, they would be able to come out and go northbound, for instance, or southbound. So southbound and northbound along this stretch. Because we have two way traffic on a narrow road, we would not be able, probably, we would probably need to remove parking along that stretch, too narrow to allow parking. Now, further up the street, this is continuing northbound on the way toward North Street. We're at Maynard Street here. So the trial requests us to have two-way traffic 
at this, you know, along this side. Um, I think we would have no parking. And maybe we would reconsider this do not enter 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. restriction. I'm not sure, but that's in place right now. Maybe that's in the mix. Again, again, it's a narrow street, it's 20 feet wide, not wide enough to allow parking on a two-way street. Then getting up to North Street, this is looking north at North Street. Remember right now it's one way, but with this trial, we're asked to look at or to consider having a two-way street right here and a stop sign. So note the sight lines we heard from Councillor Downs earlier about all the crashes that happened on the other side, on the northbound, the current, you know, the currently northbound side of Albemarle when they hit North Street. Difficult sight lines. I think it's probably very similar to the situation we have right now at Albemarle and Craft Street. Uh, maybe even worse. We have the fence there. It's very hard to see. Um, it does not seem safe at all to allow vehicles to be able to continue through or take a left or maybe even to take a right at this location and no parking on either side. Okay, um, this is the truck simulation that we saw before. So remember right now, this is one way southbound and trucks are able to make the turn and stay within the right of way. However, if it's a two-way street, you would have traffic northbound right where the trucks would be needing to have that same space. So it, there's a conflict there. So, okay, this is now looking south from North Street, right? So we have North Street looking south, Maynard, then the stop sign at Craft Street. So this would become a two-way street with this trial no parking on either side. Then when you get closer to Maynard, it's still a two-way street. You know, right now you can't take a left. So we would be removing that no left turn sign, um, no parking, and maybe consider removing this do not enter sign. I'm not sure. Uh, that's what it, the conditions would be like right in this stretch. And then when you get down to the end, um, looking south at Craft Street, it would the trial calls for a right turn only restriction. So right now, again, trucks can come down this, any car can come down this way and continue through, take the left or take the right. We're asking, we've been asked to look at right turn only restriction. So and along the two-way street here with no parking. But how do you enforce that? How do you enforce that? You have a sign there that says right turn only. The demand is sometimes to turn right, other vehicles want to take the left or they want to go straight through. How do you enforce that? We have an example of, uh, this is over at Newton North High School, Tiger Drive. We have so many signs that say no left turn onto Tiger Drive. You're not allowed to turn from Walnut Street heading north toward Newtonville into Tiger Drive. There's no left, there's a series of signs right before this. We have this sign, we have the flex post. You're not supposed to take the left and you're not supposed to take the left out. But even though we have all the signage and the flex posts, we know that there's many cars, many, many cars that still turn left at this location. We get complaints all the time. Cars are taking the left. They're going around the flex posts. They're hitting the flex posts. Um, that is the demand to take the left there. The signs are ignored. Um, now, mm -hmm. because of the winter, the flux posts have been removed. And I would not be surprised if we see more and more vehicles taking the left and ignoring the signage. So um, that's what's happening at this location. Over here, you know, there's no room to put flux posts. So I don't know how we I don't know how we would put flux posts right there. Um, I think that we might have even less compliance for that right turn only, uh, might not be effective. And um, so I guess I'm just saying that we expect people, some vehicles would ignore the postage signage based on the experience 
that we see in different parts of the city. We can't expect the police to constantly just be standing there uh, enforcing this one regulation. So um, recent history of this intersection, um, a series of crashes occurred. Um, so between January of last year and March of this year, a series of crashes had occurred. Um, there was a demand to um, make it safer. So we did install flux posts and paint in June of this year. We added the do not block box, the box, the do not block um, boxes on both approaches, extended the median, we added the flux posts. Um, so all of that happened. We did still have crashes. We had two crashes in June. They were property damage only. Um, no no in serious injuries since the these short-term improvements were installed. Um, we just voted to add an RFB uh, a little while ago at this meeting. So that will be going in, um, hopefully, we think, uh, very soon. Importantly, we, you know, hopefully many of us know that we were successful, the city was successful in applying to the state for a Safe Routes to School grant. Um, that grant is, you know, is, is great for this location. We're going to have a full signal at Crafts and Albemarle, a full traffic signal, and we would be taking out the RFB um, that goes in. Um, so a full signal, no northbound leg because that's been permanently closed, right? We're also going to have a pedestrian signal at Albemarle and North. So these are great improvements that we can't wait to, to see happen, but we have to wait. It's still being designed, but it has been funded and it is happening, um, but it won't happen until 2026, right? So that is the recent history and um, the future. So now we are going to be able to have a discussion of both of these trials. I can leave this slide up, I think. So we could, you know, and any sort of comments are welcome. We could talk about, and you know, the unintended consequences. Are we just moving a problem from one place to another, right? We should think about the inconveniences to the residents that we talked about with some of the slides, um, forcing more traffic through that signal at Crafts in North which is, you know, I, I think it's at capacity already. So more traffic through that intersection, um, safety concerns at, at, um, at Albemarle and North Street, just more pollution and congestion in the neighborhood. Actually, I should go back because someone called me, one of the calls that I received, I'm not sure if she's on the line, but she, talked about an increase in traffic in the neighborhood. Uh, let's see if we have a good overview slide. Mm, maybe this slide. Um, so if we do have a two-way street right here, if, people, if um, drivers know that they can come up to Albemarle and take the left onto North Street, um, the vehicle, I, it's, we can predict that vehicles that currently come down Craft Street, you know, and they they can't turn left here, they can't turn left here, it's closed off. They go to the signal and take this left. That's what they do currently. But if it is a um, two-way street right here and you can take, have a stop sign and take the left, we can expect more cars to come down Craft Street, take the left onto Morrill Street, take the right onto Maynard Street, a lot more traffic on Maynard Street coming over to this signal, this intersection, taking the left and taking the left onto North Street, avoiding the signal. I think people will probably find that. So I, we didn't even think about that um, until someone called me earlier today, but I thought I would mention that as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we'll just go back to the slide on discussion. Okay. David, it might be, um, it might be yes. just before we open it, a public comment, just a, another friendly reminder. We do have some comments from police and fire on this. I know, obviously, we have police here. Yes. If, Can you, would you be able to summarize the comment from the fire department? I'm not sure if they're here. Yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, let me just make sure they're not here. Um, do you, 
Do you have the letter handy? Do you want to show it on your screen? Otherwise, I don't, I don't actually have it handy. Is okay. there? Um, yeah, I was just thinking if you have your email up on the side over there, but I don't want to overcomplicate the screen sharing. So if you'd like, I can just read it. Um, yeah, maybe that's easier. Okay. Ooh, I'm sure we can post it as like a supplemental document. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hey everyone, Isaac here, traffic engineer with DPW. Um, this was something that of course we wanted some input from uh Newton Fire and Newton Police. Um I'll let I'll let Captain Doucette speak later when 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 he has a chance. Um but seeing as how we don't have fire on here, I'll just read the letter that they sent um on their behalf, if that's all right. Um so from uh Chief Gentile's office, um uh, we got a letter from Assistant Chief Michael Bianchi. Um, he wrote, uh, this letter is to address the requested trial to close Albemarle Road, southbound at North Street between North Street and Maynard, and the requested trial of changes along the southbound block of Albemarle Road between North Street and Craft Street. He referenced the two TC-17 and TC-26 items we've been discussing. He continues, he says, the fire department believes in traffic calming measures and is always looking for ways to improve safe travel while limiting the impact on, on emergency responses. However, in this situation, the fire department cannot support these trials for the following reasons. With both trials, TC-1723 and TC-2623, we believe the additional traffic forced onto Crafts North intersection and through the Albemarle Crafts intersection has unintended consequences, such as increased response times and increased danger to motorists. The increased number of motorists could make it dangerous and more difficult to safely maneuver our large vehicles when we are responding into and through this area. In addition, we are concerned about the turning radius of our trucks and making sure there is enough space available to safely make right and left turns without endangering pedestrians and other motorists. Okay, is that it? Yep. Okay, thank you very much for reading that. Um, we did get several phone calls and uh, several emails. We I counted them up. I think that we have received 10 uh, emails in opposition to the, either of the trials and one in favor. Um, okay, so that is what we have. And I would like to open it up to public comment. Let me just move something on my screen. Okay, um, I think that the first hand that went up was Marcella Reyes. If you could unmute yourself and just say your address, please. Hi, um, on North Street. Um, I was just wondering when you guys were were um, reviewing not being able to take a right on Mossman. How do you take into consideration the traffic in the morning, um, especially heading up to or towards Craft Street? There's a lot of trucks too that you know, and school buses and things like that. So. I'm wondering if that's going to slow down traffic even more, um, not being able to take that right on me. Um, on so Elgin, yeah. Not being able to take this right. Correct. So, so, all right, so you're, you're, you're just looking to acknowledge anticipated increased queues along North Street approaching Craft yeah. Street? Yeah, I just wonder if there's certain times that you can take that right, maybe. I, I don't know. I just... The traffic's pretty bad in the morning, so I'm just wondering if you're not able to take um, the right on the album route onto Maynard. Um, um, actually, that's a good point. I think that the first trial would only be closing the. Well, I'm not even sure. I I get. I'm not sure. Well, we know that it wouldn't uh, um, allow the the right turn from North Street onto Albemarle. It could be that. The, the right turn from Albemarle is still allowed. Okay. Or it could be that this whole block is just closed. But in any event, we know that it would, both of the trials would cause more traffic to come through this signal right there. Okay. And it's mostly during the school year. I'd say summertime morning traffic on our street is lighter. On Maynard Street. On North Street. On North Street. Oh, okay. Yes. North Street. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so the next hand I see is Melinda McGee. Hi, uh, this is uh, Phil Nodick, Melinda McGee. We're at 16 Maynard Street. So right in that area, that would have to drive a long way around. Um, so, you know, I didn't, neither of those proposals was, was appealing to me. Um, I think the thing that would be interesting would be to understand, and I know it's early days yet, but to understand what the, um, the traffic lights and how that might look, because maybe that would help some people understand, you know, what, what's coming. Um, I'm not a big fan of trying to change all this. And then uh, 18 months, two years later, we, we go through this all again. Um, I think, you know, and, and by the way, I appreciate all the effort you guys put into diagramming and documenting this because I, I, I did look at the papers in the second proposal. It was a little hard to wrap my head around exactly what was being proposed. Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, being somebody that's particularly close to that and having looking at what those alternatives would do, I wasn't excited about either one of them. I can, um, yeah. Dave, yes. I can, oh, I can okay. take that. Right, yeah, I, thank you. I think that's a great point. Um, you, that I wanted to um, specifically point out your question about what is coming and just sort of keeping informed on that. So, um, I'll say Newton D DPW will definitely emphasize to MassDOT for them to continue to, you know, upload information about their project. Um, you know, as they are in preliminary design, you know, I would encourage them to post concept plans, to post um, a functional design report that I'm hoping they're working on that usually gets into traffic signal warrants and just a lot of data collection and things of that nature that are helping um, the engineers make decisions um, so we'll definitely encourage them to post as much as possible, um, but that will be up to them. Um, but I'm optimistic they will do that. Yeah. Would you would you guys be able to at least point us to where we would be looking for that information? Because I don't even know where I would start to look at that. Yeah. You know what? Let, um, while the next person speaks, I'm going to see if my um, Google search, just some of the keywords brings me right in the right direction. And then I'll get back to folks. I, okay. I can. okay, thank and, you. And, yeah, and with your comment, maybe everybody already understands this, but with this slide, we can imagine in 2026, we would have a full signal right here for everyone coming up Albemarle, right? You know, past the fields, full traffic signal, and a full traffic signal right here, right? For everyone coming down North Street, you know, down Albemarle from Maynard, full traffic signal right here. That is huge. It's a huge safety improvement for this complicated intersection. We would also have a pedestrian light on this side, right? So people walking down, you know, could cross safe more safely at the light, continue through. This is now going to be closed. You know, traffic council doesn't have funding to, you know, to construct some improvement here, but we can imagine, you know, like I can almost imagine this little green space coming over further, right? And so you have this little green park with a traffic signal right here that we know is coming right across and into the field. So this is, you know, this is what we're envisioning in the future. Some of it we know is gonna happen. Some of it we're, you know, we can envision at this point. Sounds good. Um, I, I see LJ, Al, you have your hand up. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, this is Elizabeth Hoberman again of 53 Allen Ave. And again, pardon my laryngitis. Um, first of all, thank you so much for all of this extensive information um, on both these docket items. It's extremely helpful. Um, originally, I had come on to advocate um, against approving of the items, mostly because I have deep concerns about the traffic congestion, um, as well as vehicle and pedestrian safety purposes. And I'm also really pleased to see about the RFB signals. I think that's exciting. Um, but after I've listened to this information um, on the call, I wanted to maybe point out two considerations at this point, just ahead of deliberations. Um, and the first thing is, thanks 
for the truck simulation. I think that's very, very helpful and enlightening. So it seems to me that um, if the Maynard Road, the Albemarle to Maynard Road were closed, um, obviously the truck simulation shows that it would have to go down um, North Street and take a left on Craft Street. So that left you know, right. Right gets, on Street. Yeah, sorry, right. Gets very, very backed up. And I assume the traffic signal would be probably need to be reconfigured. But at this point, it I'm wondering if just the truck simulation data itself makes it a null point to even consider that that closure. I'm not sure what would be different otherwise. So I just wanted to point out that that in my mind makes consideration of um, the first docket item, you know, null. And um, this the second uh, issue that I wanted to just get some clarification is that um, if we you know, allow the two-way traffic, so this is from the second docket item, a couple items, if we allow the two-way traffic, it seems, again, that this point has been made null by the vote on the prior item of the concerns for the um, southbound road. We just, or you guys just voted to permanently close it. Um, so my question then is just, I guess, procedurally, would, you be looking to potentially pass some parts of the second docket item or none at all? I mean, there's also the consideration of if you uh, require the right turn only from Albemarle on the right to Craft Street, um, uh, you had just actually yourself brought up the point you can't cross over Albemarle to have access to Watertown Street. So um, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about different combinations of parts of this. And I, the final thing I would really want to know is, um, since again, this is my first time joining, I'm wondering if any of this was to be approved, um, what is the time bound nature of the trial that the traffic council usually does? So we have all different trial lengths, sometimes one meeting, one month, you know, <laughs> sometimes it can go for years, depending on, on you know, what's called for. Okay, so am I reading it correctly that you guys are sort of leaning towards denying at this point, basically, basically because of the truck simulation, the rerouting of local traffic, the crash concerns with taking the left from Albemarle to North? Well, you notice the presentation does not make a recommendation. Um, right now we're hearing public comment. Um, yeah. And then after public comment, we'll hear from the members of traffic council. Uh, okay. I was just trying to show just different things for people to keep in mind during the yeah. discussion. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, and again, yeah, I just wanted to point out that I think it seems like the propensity of data at this point seems heavily in favor of maybe not going forward with either item at this time or um, re, you know, holding it for later analysis. So thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you. I would tend to agree, but let's uh, hear from other members of the public. Uh, Kathy Laffer. Thank you. Uh, 26 Mossman Street. Um, it, when you said that uh, we wouldn't be able to get to our houses, I was one of the people who signed for um, closing that piece of Albemarle between North and Maynard for safety in our neighborhood. And I'm happy to drive the extra three minutes around for the safety of our children. So I wanted to point that out. Um, you talked about uh, the traffic signals uh, being struck down. I walk there twice a day with the dog. I have never seen the traffic signal at North Street struck down by a truck. So though I believe you that it's happened, I don't think it's happened with great frequency. And I don't think that should be the only reason for ruling out this petition. Thank you for that comment. Um, Councilor Downs, did you wanna speak now or did you wanna wait for public comment? No, oh, I, I, I will wait for more public comment. I know though that a try, you know, one of the considerations that we also need to take into account and I thought Mike Halley's email on this to the traffic council was quite, uh, well, you know, he really, he has a good imagination for traffic issues, shall we say. 
um, and he's been working on this uh, for a long time as well as on safety. Uh, the 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 concern is not just the safety of the people walking and the children walking in the Mossman Maynard. Abermile area here who are now uh, clearly something is desperately needed because of the amount of crazy driving we're seeing going through there and the number of crashes we're seeing at Abermile and Crafts. But the other issue is that with a signal that makes the right from north onto Abermile and then the straight through to Abermile a really s secure, safe crossing for vehicles, what you end up with is that same impatient morning traffic going south on Abermarl between two schools, playgrounds, and uh, right across where we have hundreds of kids walking and biking across that road, not all of them with the best judgment. So it's something to think about as we're thinking about the signal and something and one reason why um, when this uh, first came across our uh, radar, I thought we should probably try this before not trying this just to see if the, you know if we can do better than a signal in this location. Um, the truck turning radiuses, and the, uh, you know, I don't think non-compliance is a reason to not make something as safe as you can. Just the fact that people take a left when their left turn is allowed and that they make turns, even though you say right turn only, um, they still go straight or they still go left, um, is not a reason not to try to do it for the bulk of people who do follow the rules. But um, the, the, the turning from north onto craft um, uh, for heavy vehicles is is definitely a concern, um, as is the um, some of the other issues we brought up. So I uh, I'm now rethinking that that support, but I really think we have to do something about the safety in this neighborhood uh, for the. You know, because we don't want everybody to have to get around in a car uh, in order to be safe. We want kids to be able to walk to school and we want people who are getting exercise to be able to walk without being hit. Thank you, Councillor Downs. Uh, Leonard DePaolo. Hi, 6 Emmons Street. Um, so I've been living here since 86 and my wife has been living here since 74 and we started dating in 75 so it's, it's a i've seen many incarnations here over the years of different traffic patterns you know where they've changed some of the rules i can tell you one thing you've never pointed out in in this in an area of that would be really dangerous is on the other side of North Street, on Albemarle, there's two-way traffic on both sides of Albemarle. So to try to add two ways on the between North and Crafts, it would be impossible to manage traffic going both north and south on north street and then people on both sides of albemarle on the north side trying to take rights and lefts and the traffic going northbound I, I, I don't know if i said that wrong so on the northbound side trying to come south trying to take rights and lefts and on the southbound side trying to go north taking rights and lefts i i can't even imagine what that would be like I'm also very opposed to the blocking off of the album model. So, so I don't want to see two ways and I don't want to see it blocked. I like it the way it is. Also, the, the do not enter sign from three to five was created when Barry Controls and Raytheon was there. Um, that's never observed. Um, I don't see any reason for it. I live on Emmons Street parallel to Mosman, both are virtually dead ends. 
you can't get much safer than that for children. I, there's hardly any traffic on Maynard. The only Mosman Ma, only gets deliveries and um, and you know pedestrian. Uh, I mean uh, residents. Pretty much the same with Emmons. And when we moved in, when when my wife moved in. Now I realize GPS has changed and, and is up to date much faster now. But there used to be a passage through the Curtis Arms apartments to Pratt yeah. Drive. For years, people couldn't get to our place to deliver food. And yeah, deliver food or what, whatever deliveries we had to go. They, they had old maps or whatever. If we basically get a delivery a day minimum at our house we have we use um ride sharing you need more options to get through not not fewer i i would leave it virtually the same the, the other dangerous part that i'm really concerned about is the maynard and moral that curve and there's a bus stop there which shouldn't be there it should they should move it like another block down or something you cannot see and the addresses 10, 11, 16, and 24 on Morrill, there's cars parked in front of all of those houses every single day. When the, the quagmire just at Morrill Street trying to either get out or get in is going to be a problem. I, I just see more problems created by these changes than. Um, get out of the street. Yeah, so anyway. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much against most of the changes, and I would remove the three to five um, uh, do not enter sign. That's okay. pretty outdated. So thank you for those comments. We at this meeting we cannot vote to remove the no do not enter. Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm sure of that. But yeah. if you are interested in that, I just wanted to say it would need to go through a future traffic council meeting. Um, you would need to have a new petition filed signed by 10 residents in the neighborhood to make that request then we would study it and have a meeting just on that one particular thing okay mm -hmm. thank you thank you um going back to the top of the list jesse corey so, so i am the doctor of what one of these two requests and when i docketed mine the other trial had already been docketed, but the reason that, that I went ahead to docket this one is because I am opposed to the other trial. And the reason I am opposed to the other trial is because it would restrict access for people who live on Maynard or Mosman or the whole area because there's not another street off of North Street closer towards Waltham that takes you to Mosman or Pratt, Pratt Drive. But, and so, so with my petition, I request, or, or let me back up. So back in March, we had a meeting with traffic council just for no left turn from Albemarle Road southbound on the Craft Street. And many of the residents opposed that request. And that request was made by a road safety audit. And so that petition was taken no action. And I, I was surprised that the petition for no left turn was not right turn only. And so I went out to docket this petition for right turn only, but I knew that the right turn only would have significant impacts on the neighborhood, which is why I also went ahead to allow two-way traffic because if we did right turn only, but kept it one way, then there would be no access to North Street or California Street or Watertown Street. And I didn't want the neighborhood to be too impacted. And so with the right turn only, that's also why I want it two ways. But I want to keep the do not enter sign at the corner of Albemarle Road and Craft Street because I do not want people coming down Craft Street to turn left and cut through. And I prefer that people on Craft Street just go up to the traffic light than turn left at the light. Thank you so much for this consideration. Thank you, Jesse. Councilor Wright. Thank you. So I do, it, it was enlightening to see what the trucks were doing coming down North Street. 
And what's I see, um, you mentioned that this might create more backups. If the truck can't turn there because there's other cars waiting there, it's just going to back it up more. And especially during um, rush hour, um, it's it's already pretty backed up. I, you know, watching all this and going through this, I like, and I go through this intersection all the time, is keeping elbow open, but just make it a right turn only. My question is, because I also ride my bike through here, and so when I going up to the Charles River, so I come down Albemarle on the east side and cross over and then I come down. If you do um, close this up, where should the, how do the bikes come in? They'll stay on the east side, then cross over on Craft Street and then go down at the west side or what should the bikes bikers do? Um. So you're talking about bicyclists that are coming down Albemarle? Yeah, but they're on the east side because you, you're taking coming um, down from the path. Yeah, from the path. So they would be able to continue through. Okay, do that way. And then because you want to cross over to the other side, then they'll have to cross over on Craft Street mm -hmm. to get on the west side. With a new RFP soon. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, and like like we said before, we can envision a much better bicycle accommodation on this newly closed portion, right? Mm -hmm. And coming through the bike there, it's it's horrendous because cars are trying to go across and going right, and um, at Albemarle and Crafts going yeah you know, southbound is it's it is really an awful intersection. I think, especially for the cars trying to go across, I think. You know, making a right turn only would would be good. Thank you. You're talking about right turn only at this yeah. location. Yeah. Right turn only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, um, Captain Doucette. So, like the fire, uh, the police can't support this. It's just it's not safe. I mean, we just passed this trial that we moved to close North Street. I mean, excuse me, Armal and North. And by allowing two-way traffic out of Maynard, out to North, we're basically reinstituting this policy. And if anyone's seen the traffic in the morning coming from Pheasant and Waltham Street, it backs up all the way to Elliott Ave. So you're going to, in short order, people will turn down Morrill, go to Maynard, come out, take that left on to North, and there they go. And then now we're going to have a thousand accidents right where we're trying to stop. So you, you can't do that option. And then with the trucks turning, it's you're going to have head on collisions in all these spots. Like right now, I've seen it firsthand. A truck comes down, he has to wait to clear out all those cars so he can finally get on the opposite side of Craft Street to make that right turn when he inadvertently misses that right turn at Albemarle. So right now, it's the safest option. I know everyone wants this to be safer and we all want the same thing, but. Unfortunately, we have to wait for the traffic lights. And I think that will fix this intersection. We've already added the flex posts. We've restricted some of the movements as it is. We've added the RRB right now. So that's safer for the pedestrians. So I think we've made the incremental changes we need to do until the traffic lights are installed. Thank you very much. David, can I jump back in? Yes. Isaac. Just, just for folks. So I um I promise to Google around and try to <laughs> direct people in the right spots for some of the different project files related to this. I remembered MassDOT separated their road safety audits into basically a whole separate uh, section on their website. So for the specific road safety audit, what you can do is you can basically just Google MassDOT road safety audits. It comes to like a general page about road safety audits. There's a map. And then on that map, basically what the, their goal has been to just make every single road safety audit they've done statewide available for anyone to read. So on that map, you can find this intersection and it gives you like the project number, um, project page and the PDF attachment for this road safety audit. Um, of course, if, if anyone's having trouble finding it, they can contact me and I'll direct you in the right place. Okay, great, thank you, Isaac. 
Okay, um, going back to public comments, the next hand is Seth Goodman. Uh, yes, hi again, uh, Seth Goodman at 43 Pratt Drive in West Newton. Uh, thanks for this great presentation, especially some of these things I hadn't really thought about, uh, especially illuminating to see the problems that trucks are going to have trying to turn around in that area. I hadn't actually considered it. Uh, I wrote up a whole bunch of points that I posted on the neighborhood web um, listservs, and I also filed it with the uh, clerk. Uh, so my comments are there. A lot of the, my comments have been pointed out by other people, so I'm not going to reiterate those. Um, I, I think what's really important here is we don't lose sight of the fact that the first proposal, although it doesn't state it explicitly, uh, is really trying to turn Maynard into a safer uh, road. Uh, there's a lot of kids and, and uh, folks walking around there. And uh, I do go in that way all the time, all the mile to Maynard uh, to get home <clears throat> without hoping, trying to avoid going all the way around to Morrill Street. Um, I don't often see a lot of cars cutting through there, but when they do cut through there, they're going like bats out of hell. I mean, I've had people riding my bumper and I'm doing the speed limit or less. I'm usually doing 20 miles an hour in there. And there's cars literally riding my bumper trying to get past me as I turn off into Emmons. Uh, so there's a lot of impatient people there. And I think anything we can do to turn Maynard uh, and, and do, uh, into a safer spot with traffic calming, um, speed limit signs, flashing lights, speed bumps, machine gun turrets, whatever it takes uh, to get people to slow down there, I think will go a long way towards uh, uh, reassuring folks and their kids who live in that area. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is uh, Morrill Street. That I call it a 60-foot stretch between Crafts and Maynard. Uh, another, um, I think uh, Mr. Leonard DePaula pointed this out. That is a very narrow road. And when there's cars parked on both sides, and they often are, there is barely enough room for one car to get through there. Any increase in traffic in there is going to make things very, very difficult. As it is, I hate going through there, but... Um, I just be very careful. It's very dangerous. Cars come flying in there without paying attention that there's actually cars parked on both sides. Uh, to make that safer, you'd have to eliminate parking on one side, preferably on the east side of Morrill uh, for sight lines. I don't know how you go around doing that. I know the neighbors there probably won't like it, but uh, there's often big pickup trucks parked there blocking sites and uh, blocking cars trying to get through there safely. So that's something that needs to be looked at. And to uh, that other point about Maynard running into Morrill, <clears throat> that is not a T intersection. That's kind of a curve. And the cars coming up Maynard going west, a lot of them don't realize that they're supposed to stop there uh, at Morrill. That's, they're supposed to stop there, and they don't. I've almost got sideswiped a bunch of times. So I go through that intersection with a, you know, I got to look to my right and make sure somebody isn't coming flying at me. Uh, I don't know what it would take to put a stop sign there to make it explicit that cars have to stop at Morrill before proceeding. Uh, I don't think you need a special permission to do that. I mean, they're supposed to stop there anyway. So just from a safety perspective, I'd like to see that there. And um, if you could tell me what we need to do to get that stop sign there, that'd be great. Okay, uh, so I, both of those things that you uh, suggested are items that would be docketed for traffic council almost every single meeting we here at traffic council either we're voting to add a stop sign at a t intersection like you have here or voting to restrict parking on one side of a narrow street to ensure that you know fire department you know fire engines can get through so it would take um, a resident in the neighborhood or an elect a city councilor to docket an item have the correct number of signatures um, filed with the city clerk, and then it would you know, be discussed at a future traffic council meeting. It's not something we can vote on today. It needs uh, to be so specifically I mean, docketed. You know what the process was, but thank you yeah. for that. Um, yeah. Traffic calming requires the same process as well? That's that a different true? process. That's a different process. Okay. It, do, it does not go through traffic council, a uh, separate process for that. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll just say, so we, about that, Isaac? yeah, so we have a very robust traffic calming report that we update annually. 
um, traffic comment requests are amongst the most popular requests we receive in the city. Uh, so we have a very thorough data-driven process um, to prioritize requests. I know Maynard Street um, has been part of the evaluation for a few years and will continue to be. Um, so I would just point folks in the direction of that report um, that can be found pretty easily uh, by Googling Newton Traffic Calming. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, uh, opportunity to make some comments. Thank you. Thank you. The next hand I see is E. O'Brien. Hi, thank you. Um, I am opposed to both these uh, propositions. Um, I do live on I'm at 44 Pratt Drive. I've been here for over 30 years. I've seen um, the same thing as uh, uh, Len Lenny has seen, um, Leonard DiPaolo um, on Pratt Drive that used to cut through and um, times that there's been ambulances and also police cars that uh, thought they could get through into Pratt Drive. So I am very concerned for my elderly neighbors as well as my elderly self that um, cards and uh, emergency vehicles will not get through. And I share the concern of um, my neighbors about uh, Morrill Street and the cars that are parked there and how tight that is. That would be the only way to get out of this neighborhood if uh, things were blocked on Maynard. And um, But I do share concern for the speeders uh, going down Maynard Street since they've paved. Um, it's, a, it's absolutely beautiful, but unfortunately it has become a raceway and I would like to see um, speed tables uh, put in to um, mitigate that. So that is where I'm at. I would like to just keep it the way it is and then um, actually have a study done on Maynard Street that we could actually get uh, a stop sign at the, at the, at the end and also um, uh, speed tables on Maynard. Thanks. Thank you. The next hand is Keith Worthley. Uh, hello, Keith Worthley, uh, 100 North. Uh, for the purposes of the map, that's right about where Farwell Street meets North. Um, a very good discussion. Uh, I think the proposal to have two-way uh, on that stretch of Albemarle um, uh, is, I, I think that's a uh, bad idea. Um, particularly for reasons of uh, emergency vehicles getting through that narrow road, uh, if it was a two-way. Uh, I'd also just like to opine that uh, we should not uh, try to discourage, uh, encourage any more traffic running through Maynard Street at that site. Um, and I, I apologize if this is already in plans or, or proposed, but I think pedestrian uh, initiated um, signal possibly at, on both sides of cheesecake brook at albemarle and north um might be a, a good way to uh manage the traffic and and I, I know we're not talking traffic mitigation um but those are my thoughts regarding uh these proposals thank you thank you very much next we have ann armore And you would need to unmute. Okay. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Uh, and if you if you have more than one, I uh, I live at uh, fifty nine Mossman Street, yep. and uh, I am opposed to both of these. Uh, having to uh, not being able to turn on to Maynard Street would is just you know uh, uh, an incredible uh, inconvenience to us. I appreciate the the uh, safety issues, though, and wonder whether speed humps or bumps uh, may be uh, an issue, may be a solution that will uh, help to slow down the traffic. Because I can appreciate the uh, problems with uh, folks going through there very quickly, and the other proposal just makes no sense at all to me. And having uh, worked in Boston for most of my career and uh, needing to get up to the Mass Pike from where I live, being able to only turn right on Craft Street <laughs> would definitely have been a really pro big problem for me. And even now, uh, just to go to the store, 
uh, would be a real difficulty having to only be turn it, take a right on Craft Street. So it just, neither of these proposals makes um, makes any sense for me personally living here. Thank you for uh, that. Yep, uh, also, just another uh, compliment to your presentation. Really impressive. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next hand is Sherry Cohen. Did he call on me? Yes, I did. Hello. Okay. I'm sorry. We're, we're just got two computers going. Um, I'm Sherry Cohen. I live at 59 Mossman Street in Newton. Um, and I'm opposed to both of these suggestions. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I've lived here for 34 years. I actively bike daily in the neighborhood. And I also walk thinking of Albemarle as a two-way street. Right now, one way, it's impossible to get going anywhere. And two ways, it just feels like next to impossible. to Even when I walk down Maynard to get, let's say, over to the bike path or whatever. It's it's really hard. I also am very concerned about the chaos on North Street and Craft Street and what you suggested with the trucks makes it even more alarming. And for the record, I'm all for the kids too, which is why I'm also concerned about idling cars and pollution and the noise. It's already incredible. We live on the North Street side of Mossman, so we can already hear traffic uh, during the day, most significantly early morning and late afternoon. But I think how much crazier it will be, and I know a lot of North Street residents are really concerned about that. Do you know that the speed limit on Maynard Street right now is 30 miles per hour? It is not posted, but I have a car that tells me what the speed limit is, and it's 30 miles an hour. I think right off the bat, make it 10. Will that stop people? You had a good point earlier, but it could. Anything that can be anything that can do any kind of traffic calming. And I think ultimately we wanna create a friendly environment for the kids, the pets. I'm a senior citizen, you know, for all of us, but unfortunately this idea won't do it. But I think there are things that need to be looked at and maybe some things right away. Waiting three years for a traffic light, that's not a good idea in my opinion, but maybe posting a lower speed limit Maybe some of the suggestions would be a better idea. But as I said, I'm opposed to both of them. And thank you for the time. And thank you for listening to us. And yes, it's a great presentation. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and either Isaac or Adrian, can you, if while we have the next person speaking, can some can one of you just quickly look in our TPR to check the speed limit of Maynard Street to see if there it actually is a regulatory 30 mile an hour limit or is it actually 25? statutory yeah. limit like the rest of the city i'll uh i'll try to find that while okay. the next person speaks thank you the next one is aaron uh, blanchfield hi uh aaron and bill blanchfield were at nine mossman street um at the lower end of the street right at maynard um we lived here for 15 years and um, I was one of, we were one of the ones that signed the petition um, for closing Abemarle at North Street. And I wanna say that, um, you know, there's there's some ways around some of the issues that were brought up, I think with the, um, the police issue and safety issue about getting into the neighborhood, we're only asking for a trial. I understand there's a light coming at Abemarle later um, and Craft Street, but we shouldn't be asked to have to wait for safety. Um, and in order to temporarily trial block that space, you could use flex posts and then the emergency vehicles could still go over it. It could be posted as a do not enter and blocked with flex posts and then emergency vehicles could still enter if they needed to. There's also lots of other entrances to our neighborhood. It's not just Morrill Street and Crafts. There's a, um, the light at Crafts and um, Walnut. There's also like three entrances up on Waltham Street. Um, I'm at Crafts and Waltham. Um, but there's other ways. It takes longer, sure. But um, I just wanted to point out that in the presentation, none of the positives of why we wanted to close this road was mentioned. I have a list of seven <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll say them really quick. Um, but some of the, the topics weren't talked on. Um, we talked about cut throughs, Maynard. The, our neighbor on Pratt Street made a good point. It's not a huge cut through with tons of traffic, but the ones that come through, they're on your butt, they're fast and it's dangerous. Um, 
you know, we take our own measures when we're out there with kids and put cones in the street to try and slow them down. Um, driving the wrong way on Albemarle, that wasn't even mentioned at all. Um, we have neighbors that see them come from Craft Street and turn on to Albemarle. Um, I've seen it multiple times from Maynard Street turning onto Abermarl and heading left towards North Street. Um, I almost got nailed by a UPS truck and they should know better. They should have a GPS to not know to go that way. But nobody reads signs. It's posted to not turn left um, and it's posted do not enter on the street. But I really think that signs get overlooked and paint gets overlooked. Um, and sometimes we need physical measures in order to change things. Uh, we talked about the crosswalk on crafts, and I love that you're going to put in the light there, the crosswalk light. So thank you for that. Um, there's too much traffic that's on Craft Street. And it's really dangerous by just temporarily closing Abermarl. It will limit the traffic that's coming out of Abermarl onto crafts, which then you don't have four different places of people coming from all different directions, making it confusing right by the crosswalks. Um, cars ignore painting and lines. You constantly, if you're watching Craft Street right now, the flex post came down and immediately the next day, someone was driving right over the yellow lines to rush down to the light. Um, they're driving over the, the crosswalks. They're blocking the boxes that you have painted. Um, no one respects those um, painted lines at all. And they're making multiple lanes on Craft Street just to get where they want to go. Um, and I already talked about ignoring signs. You know, if you put a sign that says, do not enter into Maynard, it's already ignored anyway. It doesn't help the couple of neighbors that also signed this petition that have driveways on Abermarl, they were for closing this space as well um, to reduce the traffic on Abermarl and improve um, the safety on Craft Street. Did I miss any questions? Yeah, I think you got everything. I think uh, for us, it's, it's safety first with the little kids and, and this does that and everything else, I don't give a rat's ass about. I just care about being having the kids be safe and uh, folks who are against that, I don't see this as, a, as their top priority and that's disappointing. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next comment is from Nancy Solari. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I live on Harding Street and I can empathize with my neighbors on Maynard Street because Harding Street is also like a speedway and a cut through. So, so I get it. Um, but one, but I certainly don't want to see that um, Albemarle blocked off getting to Maynard Street um, because we have approximately 12, 13 streets in this little back neighborhood with probably a hundred homes. And that would really restrict our access getting to our homes because we cannot, we can't get go up Craft Street to uh, get to our, our little neighborhood. But one thing I am concerned, and I think I mentioned it to you when I called you earlier in the day is, and I think somebody had alluded to the issue, which I would be more concerned about the safety on Maynard Street is that People will know from the Waltham Street, Craft Street intersection, they're going to take that left onto Morrill Street. Once they know that Maynard Street, they'll go down Maynard and take that left onto Albemarle, get to North, and they'll bypass all of the um, North Street intersection. So if anything, I think it's going to increase traffic on Maynard Street. And they will, people will fly down that street. So... Um, for that reason, I would be really, really concerned about doing that. Um, and we're dealing with the same thing with the traffic on Harding Street and whatnot. So, but I do think you got to realize there's 13 streets that would be severely impacted by shutting off our access. So, but I am in support for taking the right only onto Craft Street from Albemarle. I think that's, am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, from Albemarle onto Craft. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, anyone? Hi, this is uh, Chuck in Annie Wynn. We're at uh, 37 Pratt Drive. Um, we have two kids that uh, go today, so they have to cross uh, Crafts uh, every morning. So we do appreciate um, some of the changes that, that, that are upcoming. Um, in terms of the the two proposals that were discussed, uh, we are we do oppose them. Uh, while we do empathize and 
I think, agree with some of the concerns that have been expressed on, on the traffic and speed on Main Street. Um, we don't believe that what's being proposed is the right solution for that. Um, we'd be open to discussion around other alternatives to that. Um, but just given the reasons already discussed uh, previously, um, the, the safety uh, concerns in the fire department and the, the Newton police, uh, we oppose uh, both of uh, the proposals that uh, are on the table right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Daniela McKinnon. Hi, this is actually Sean McKinnon, Daniela's husband. Uh, Daniela had to step out. Uh, we're both down at 67 Mossman. Um, I'll, I'll keep my comments brief because I, I don't think I can articulate it as well as the uh, graphics um, explained our concerns. Um, but I think we, it's safe to say that we both oppose both of the tickets that are being um, presented. So we both use the North Street to Albemarle uh, route every day. I use it every night coming home from work, um, use it multiple times a day, depending on the errands that we're running. And even without Albemarle being closed, um, I've seen backups at the um, Craft Street to North Street light that prevent me from you know entering. So I, I don't think it's a minor inconvenience. I think during rush hour times, it's uh, it'll actually, in some cases, take several delays of the light. I think we're pushing a lot of traffic out onto Craft Street. Um, it's, it'll force the folks that would normally take a right to cross over three additional crosswalks, um, some of which are not regulated by walk lights, you know, which is just going to add more to the backups. Um, and, and I don't think there's been any discussion on uh, traffic study patterns, you know, in order to change the light uh, frequency. Um, so I guess with that, I'll just I'm just adding my voice to the uh, the folks who are opposing the two the two tickets. Thanks. All right, thank you very very much. Okay, um, I don't see any more hands up at this time. I'm just gonna look through. Anybody uh, else? Uh, anybody yeah. else? Is someone speaking? Yeah, it's it's me, David. <laughs> oh yeah, Isaac. Yeah, no, just while you're looking, I just wanted to get back to oh, yeah. the point. Um, so I just checked. Uh, Maynard Street does not have a regulatory speed limit. Um, I flipped through the Google Street View, which is pretty recent. I did not see any regulatory speed limit signs. Um, so I'm not sure why someone's GPS was showing 30. The My best guess is perhaps... The GPS is slightly off and think maybe yeah. thinks the car is still on Craft Street, which has a regulatory 30 mile per hour speed limit. Um, but when you probably just, because it used to be 30 when that was the statutory limit, right? Now city council approved it as 25. It it could be, but I, I have found GPSs to be pretty accurate. So I mean the the big point here is that MassDOT controls all speed limits uh, statewide we do not have jurisdiction over speed limits. And I think because they have jurisdiction of that, they're feeding that information to the GPSs. And, and that might be why they're more often right than not. Um, and so if you don't have a regulatory speed limit, you cannot post a regulatory speed limit sign. And so Maynard Street, like a lot of local streets in New England, would fall under the statutory speed limit of 25. And, and we can't change that. The only thing the city can do, as some folks on this meeting will be familiar with, are safety zones. Um, but that has to follow very strictly the mass dog criteria. Right. All right. Thank you, Isaac. Um, without getting too far off topic, shared Cohen, did you have any last comments? And you're, I'm sorry, you're muted. That was me who said the 30, yeah. the, the card does say it, but is there a way to even post the speed limit? Anything we can do because we all are all in agreement. We want safety for the kids, for the adults. I want emergency. I'm a senior citizen. I hope I don't need it, but I want an emergency vehicle to get here as quickly as possible. And I'm deeply concerned about the traffic jams this would cause. But is there any way to even post a speed limit so people know it's 25? We cannot post regulatory speed okay. limit signs um, right, for the vehicle. Yeah. They are posted, uh, you know, on the perimeter of the city, big signs that yeah, say yeah. citywide limit, speed limit is 25. Um, so that's what we have. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to speak if you, you know, wave your hand or if you raise your hand? This is your last chance. And then we're going to close the public comment period. 
just flipping through. I don't see anyone else. There's okay. no one else. Okay. So I'm going to close the public comment period. I want to thank all of you for all of these really great comments. I think this has been a very good discussion, uh, very interesting. And we're going to close the public comment period now and open the discussion to the members of Traffic Council or to city councilors that are with us. Um, what do we all think about these trials? Jeremy. Yeah. So initially, I was actually inclined to support um, Jesse's trial, which I guess isn't just Jesse's, Jesse's trial, since I believe neighbors signed it as well. Um, I mean, I like the idea that we would have the right turn only at crafts, but then give the neighbors another way out um, going up two ways in Albemarle. Um, but, you know, that being said, um, I think uh, Captain Doucette and others are correct that uh, if you do that, then you also create a, sort of a magnet with people going left on Morrill and then up Maynard and up Albemarle to get to North Street. So um, I guess at this point, I probably would not support either trial. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> uh, Mitch. So just following up on Jeremy, um, you know, I was just doing a chart. I think some, I think one of the uh, neighbors had a listing that they went through and so I went through with a lot of minuses and pluses. And uh, the first one seemed to me that uh, it really, uh, that sort of accented, you know, a big inconvenience for people who live in the Maynard, uh, Emmons, Mossman, et cetera. And, um, you know, forcing them to uh, come up, what is that three, I can't read it, Terrell or Nar or, Wall Street? Yeah. So coming up, and I think the testimony was that that's a particularly narrow street with cars parked on both sides. Uh, that seemed to be, you know, not just an inconvenience, but a uh, a major problem. And it also added traffic to crafts and whatever crosswalks are there. Um, so the, uh, you know, on the positive side was the cut-throughs on Maynard and, you know, people use various terms for tailgating or, or following close to bumpers uh, with safety and speeding. And, uh, you know, I I sort of think that uh, traffic calming may be the way to deal with that. Uh, the truck movement issue, that didn't seem to me, I mean, I don't know what the numbers of trucks are, but that didn't seem to be as significant, although clearly when you're making a right turn from north to crafts, you know, going on the other side of the street is not a good thing. Um, and I think, you know, the opposition by, I guess, the fire police on that one. Uh, the the second one, uh, I don't have too much to say about that because I couldn't understand it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I understood how the two way was going to be a big problem at Albemarle and North, but, uh, it it just seemed to be some issue. And then the right turn, you know, on Craft Street from Albemarle, whether you have a right turn or through, I think one of the uh, residents said, you know, make her trip to the Mass Pike that much longer. Um, I'm not particularly opposed to either one of the, those suggestions, leaving it the way it is or having right turn, but everything else seemed to me uh, not helpful. So I, I guess, you know, I would oppose or vote negative on both petitions at this point. Okay, thank you, Mitch. Isaac. Yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts. Um, you know, as someone who's been working on this area for a long time, who participated in the road safety audit back in, I think, 2021 or whenever it was, um, you know, I really admire everyone's advocacy for safety and, and especially even the folks that, um, you know, fully acknowledge some inconveniences um, to their experience as a resident, as far as just rerouting and, and how they get home, you know, that's, that's very admirable to um, be willing to sign up for that, um, for, for a certain improvement. Um, when I look at this, um, you know, something that comes to mind is the effort that has been put in for all the short-term improvements, um, you know, 
while DPW has looked at this, uh, you know, we also had a whole team of, of engineers from outside Hudson look at this. And, you know, we had a meeting back in the spring, I believe it was, when we were talking about the Albemarle Road tra traffic calming project. We brought up the RSA. We brought up how it had, you know, over a dozen recommendations in the short term, almost all of which DPW has done. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I think we're trying here. Um, you know, we do see there being a good solution in the future. You know, it, it is a shame that it takes so long. You know, my best explanation of that is that, you know, we're one municipality out of many all competing for the same funds with the state. Um, and it, that's just kind of how it goes, unfortunately. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the number of consequences that are caused by some of these proposed trials. And again, while I admire the intentions, the really good intentions of them, um, I, I cannot support them. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Any other comments from city councilors or other members of traffic council? I think we've heard from many of you. Um, Councilor Kelly. I'll just quickly say that I support everything Isaac just said. Um, I, having listened to it all, I particularly also did find the input from um, you know, fire and police really important and the turning, the impossibility of the turning radii for the trucks to be compelling, the potential increase of, of traffic along Maynard. I, I, I like the direction you're going in and I do hope that you will not approve either of these, but thank you very much for the opportunity to say it publicly. Thank you very much, Councilor Kelly. Councilor Downs. I, yeah, I suspected that this, I suspect, I suspected that this wouldn't um, pass. However, I wanted to just warn us of what I think is uh, gonna be the consequence of uh, uh, this, you know, trial not going through and the signal going in is that we then further put a lot of southbound pressure from North Street to Watertown on Abermarle, um, which is not just environmentally sensitive with the creek there and subject to a lot of flooding. So when we do have intense rainstorms, people driving their habitual route to where they're going in the morning will occasionally drive right into um, enough water that their car is totaled. We've seen several of those. We saw one actually float downstream and take a pedestrian bridge. So th that's another danger. And just that this you know, south of Craft, Craft Street, we have two schools, playing fields, and hundreds of kids crossing the street. So before that traffic that traffic signal goes in and crafts an Abermar, we will need to find a way to make Abermore Road south of Crafts, going southbound, a lot safer and slower so that it is not as attractive as a cut through and so that kids can safely cross the street to get to school on their own. Agree with all that. Thank you. Any other comments, or would anyone like to make a motion to NAM these items or to deny? Yeah, David, I can make a motion to NAM. Okay. So we have a motion on the table from Isaac to take no action, NAM, for TC 1723 and for TC 26. 23. Um, any last comments? Danielle, do we have to do these separately? Probably. Yeah. Let's do, can you yes, do the, please. Can you call the roll for TC 1723? Mr. Kosas. Aye. Mr. Fishman. Uh, aye is a negative. Yes. It's for no action necessary. Aye. Captain Doucette. Aye. Mr. Prezant. Aye. Councilor Downs. Councilor Downs. Okay, that is four to zero. Councilor Downs not voting. Voted no action necessary. So four to zero. Yes. Councilor Downs, are you with us? 
Okay, she's not. This. She might have dropped off. She might have dropped off. Okay. Um, and for then we have a, mm -hmm, a motion to NANTC 2623. Correct. Mr. Kosas? Aye. Mr. Fishman? Aye. Captain Doucette? Aye. Mr. Prezant? Aye. And Councilor Downs? Okay. That's voted no action necessary, four to zero. Councilor Downs not voting. All right. And so that completes the business. Thank you again for all the discussion. Uh, this was a good meeting. Our next meeting will be on December 14th. That is our last um, traffic council meeting of 2023. So thank you all again. Have a good night. Thank night. you very much. I hope everyone has a great night, a great weekend, and a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse.